Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to another and what I presume to be the final look at E3 2003. Um, yeah. Going to be doing the final show floor that I've been able to find, and then we're going to end it with this. E3 2003 GameSpot's best games of E3 2003. Because I'm just intrigued, right? What they'll think. Um, yeah, I'm kind of curious of what games would have stood out to them. So this one's uploaded by our old reliable YouTube channel here, old E3 VHS videos, who we've watched a few of their videos before, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, link in description, as always, for both videos. Uh, but let us begin. Hmm. Irgendwie erinnert mich. Hmm. Oh. Irgendwie erinnert mich dieses Knöpfchen drücken Very an. French. Ah, Very German. genau an die Zeit, als ich das letzte Herr der Ringe Spiel von EA testen durfte. Jetzt ist eine. Yeah, see, now this is the Lord of the Rings that I know of. Electronic Arts und begutachten das nächste yeah. Spiel Herr der Ringe, die Rückkehr des Königs. Sieht auf den ersten Blick dem Vorgänger recht ähnlich, hat einige neue spielbare Charaktere. Zum Such Beispiel. Such a good game too, eh? Sieht nach wie vor sehr fett aus und wird auch bestimmt wieder ein gutes Spiel. Continuously. Yeah, no, I remember it being a really fun game. Wir zeigen euch hier den Einstiegstrailer. Oh, Metal Gear Rising Sun. I remember Metal Gear Rising Sun as well. Wir durften den kompletten ersten Level spielbar begutachten, durften das aber nicht filmen. Before we do that, I just want to see, like, if he says where this video originally came from. I was kind of curious about it. Because, considering there's, like, German there, I assume it's for, like, a German website, maybe? Right? Probably. But I can't really say. Yeah, Middle of Honor Rising Sun. I remember playing a fair bit of this, actually. I remember thinking it was pretty good. It may actually be bad, but... <laughs> I liked it when I played it. Yeah, that's fair. Ultra gut inszeniert, besonders der Sound hat uns mal wieder umgehauen. Was anderes haben wir bei Metal of Honor Spielen aber eigentlich schon gar nicht mehr erwartet. So, von der Hektik um Pearl Harbor in die gemütliche EA Sports Big Lounge und auf Sports Big Lounge. SSX3 zeigt einige Verbesserungen gegenüber den Vorgängern. Das Team ist wesentlich größer, das Budget ist größer und das Spielgelände ist absolut viel größer. Ihr spielt auf einem riesigen Berg, der in verschiedene Abschnitte unterteilt ist, die ihr nach und nach freischaltet. So they had like SSX as well? Not just 1080 Avalanche? Wir freuen uns tierisch auf Yeah, I guess they had both. Neues Spawnspiel gibt's auch. Everything or Nothing heißt das Ganze. This is the other one you said, right? Everything or nothing? Yeah. I don't think we quite finished the game, but I did play a decent amount of it. Maybe you should pick this up sometime, too. It looks pretty good, yeah. actually. For a licensed game, it was actually pretty good, from what I remember. Man, Need for Speed Underground, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, nice. Yeah, that's when I had Underground this year, too. Yeah, I didn't realize they had it this early. Thought it was later. Yeah, 2003 skateboarding video game. Well, okay. That's a good one, is Thug, though. Tony Hawk's Underground is really good. Yeah. Oh, then Spider Man 2. Oh, Spider Man! It's probably one of my favorite licensed <laughs> games I've played. Second one in particular. The first one's good too. I mean, same, honestly. I really, really like Spider Man 2. You see, yeah, a few scenes from a farm mission. Auch das Spiel werden wir euch sicherlich in einer der nächsten Ausgaben noch einmal ganz ausführlich auch auf Video vorstellen. See, a lot of actually pretty... Yeah, I know, it's a pretty crazy game, eh? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of really uh, interesting games came out this year, apparently. Yeah, yet, I'm surprised. And yet, in very few of the things that we actually seen a lot of them uh, actually shown. Yeah. Like Spider-Man 2, I'm surprised Spider-Man 2 didn't get more um, love from anything. But maybe because people yeah, saw it too. as like another licensed game, if they're like, ah, it's going to be bad. Then it actually turned out to be really good. Yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of the expectation, right? I am kind of surprised that they didn't have Ratchet and Clank 2 at this E3, but to be fair, that game only had a one year developer cycle. So, I mean, it, it probably got finished pretty late. I mean, potentially. Because it came out in like, I think it was November 2003? Man, Jennifer Love Hewitt, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, go two times speed. Don't make it so I don't get copyright struck. Yeah. That's pretty cool, actually. That is. She's mm. doing really good. Almost perfectly mm. good. Mm. Probably a little too good. Mm. It, it does actually seem a little too good, to be honest. It's like, oh, that blue line looked perfectly. Like, I get it. Yeah. She's a singer, I guess, but like, I don't know. That just seemed almost way too good, man. I don't know. Richtig, wir sind am Eidorstand und es gibt ein neues Legacy of Kane Spiel. Legacy of Kane. Im gleichen Spiel sowohl Kane als auch Raziel, nämlich kapitelweise. Hier sehen wir den bösen Vampir bei ersten Kämpfen. Und hier Raziel. Leider ist auch hier durch das... I do actually want to get physicals of the Legacy of Kane games eventually. Yeah, we should. Hier ist die PS2-Fassung, die Xbox-Fassung sieht noch ein Tick besser aus. Die Grafik ist einfach Hammer. Da hat Eidos auf jeden Fall nochmal richtig die Latte nach oben gelegt. Die Spiele sahen ja noch nicht schlecht aus, aber das ist nochmal ein richtiger Schritt nach vorne. Yeah, Deus Ex Invisible War, another uh, series of games that I've not played, but I always hear good things about. I don't know if I've heard as much things about Invisible War, maybe that was a bad one, but... Yeah, I'm not sure about that one in particular. Uh, Tomb Raider 2? Okay. I think this is two. I don't know. Yeah, Backyard Wrestling was uh, it's a very trash game, but like it's charming enough. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, I kind of forgot, when you get scared in the game, you gotta do like a series of bone throws. Oh, Camillo, the one that wasn't seen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually muted it. I mean, this doesn't matter. I can't understand German anyway, but still. I mean, yeah, I don't understand German either, so... <laughs> See, good thing we're here, just to look at uh, cool stuff. Yeah. Okay, this looks kind of funny. Yeah, this is the uh, Conquer. Oh, is it? Okay. Ivan and Cut. Ah, uh, good old Crimson Skies. Yeah. Und schließlich der Nachfolger zu einem der Starttitel für die Xbox, Project Gotham Racing 2. Sieht auch fantastisch aus und wird natürlich Xbox Live Support haben. Weiter geht's jetzt mit Namco. Namco zeigte eine ganze Reihe von... Yeah, we've been seeing a lot from Breakdown. Actually, I wonder if Breakdown was... Uh, people's favorite. We're one of the people's favorites of E3. Just because we've seen a lot of looks at Breakdown. Yeah, I could see it being promoted as one of Xbox's big games too, because they were really kind of focusing on the first-person shooter. Yeah. New drivers and characters. <laughs> Nokia war ein Neuling auf der E3, die hatten ja auch vorher oh, oh, the Engage. Oh, boy. So eine Mixtur aus Handy und Handheld. Und wir haben damit gespielt und müssen sagen, wir sind One of the biggest flops of all time. Of all time. Wir werden uns auch in Zukunft noch damit beschäftigen. Yeah. Square Enix zeigte ein neues Spiel, Drakengard, japanisch Drago Dragoon. Ah, Drakengard. Oh, Drakengard. Isn't that the one that you picked up? No, it's one I've been wanting to get for a while. It's a relatively rare game on the PS2. I think it goes for about $100. Really? I thought you had Drakengard. No, I'm pretty sure I don't. You're probably thinking of Draken. Maybe. It's Draken the Lost Gates or Ancient Gates or something. 
Ja, Drag in the Ancient Gates. Das bedeutet, wo können wir sein? Wir sind am Wendy-Stand. Das heißt, ja, genau. auch zu sehen, war aber für uns nicht so ultra spannend. Yeah. Wir euch irgendwann besser. Wir konzentrieren uns lieber auf die wirklichen Highlights. Da wäre zum Beispiel zum einen Buffy 2, Chaos Buffy Blitz. the Vampire Slayer. Nicht nur mit oh, Lager, me, yeah. We did see this one at uh, Sony's, I believe. Und We did, yeah. Oh, look, it's Ghost. Again. No! It's still so sad that cancel this. Like, I know we've said this every time we've seen it. <laughs> but it looks like it was so close to being finished, too. It does. I really don't know why it was cancelled. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know why Blizzard... I don't know why Blizzard had no faith in it, or didn't have faith in it. Because everybody was really hyped for it, from what I remember. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Also, this looks pretty cool. Yeah, which one's this? They did show it. I didn't, I didn't see it. I'm pretty sure. It was, uh, right there. Hunter the Reckoning Wayward? Is that it? Maybe. I'm not sure. Let me see, let me see. Hunter the Reckoning. Maybe not. But I mean, they're showing it. Okay. Yeah, like you'll probably say it or they'll show it. Oh, Baldur's Gate Dark no. Alliance. Oh, okay. I still need to get the first one. I have the second one. Yeah, I didn't know that one was a thing. Yeah, it's not good. It's too different from what Fallout actually is. From what I understand. On Outbreak, one of my one of my favorites. I'm gonna be real. I like Outbreak a lot, just for its uniqueness. I did do a stream of this one. If anyone wants to check that out, it's pretty cool. Did some cool guy things. Struggled a lot. Maximo. Those are some nice figures. Yeah. Maximo always look cool. Das war ein Charakter, der im ersten Teil vorkam, aber den ihr nicht spielen konntet. Jetzt könnt ihr euch in den Tod verwandeln, worüber sich Fans des ersten Teils sicher freuen werden. Maximo 2 wird bestimmt klasse. Ebenfalls klasse wird sicherlich Steel Battalion Line of Contact. Yeah, Steel Battalion. This is one you've uh, mentioned, actually. Yeah. I just thought it was really cool because they designed it like an actual mech game. I don't know if that controller they were showing is like an optional peripheral or not, but it just looked really cool to me. Some kind of Animushi fighting game? I guess so. That's really different. Lots of zombies walking around. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Ubisoft. Prince of Persia. Oh, the classic. The... Yeah, no, this one... I never played, but I know everybody loves Prince of Persia. I've heard it's really good, and I've heard a lot of the parkour in this game is what inspired Assassin's Creed. Yeah, I believe that's true. Yo, American Idol! I assume she was the winner of one of the American Idols. Most likely. Oh. Yeah, so yeah, that looks like it's a really boring rhythm game. Yeah, like, I don't know. I enjoyed it for the gimmick, but also like watching American Idol back then. Yeah. I was gonna say, it seems like a Pro Evolution soccer game. Yeah. Operation Flashpoint is our bonbon to close. Ganz lustig, wir haben dem Entwickler gesagt, er soll Operation Flashpoint für die Xbox soll aber Ride the bike. Wir fahren ein bisschen mit Fahrrad rum, greift sich an ein Trabi und fährt ein bisschen mit dem Trabi rum. Gut, auch so kann man Operation Flashpoint spielen. Also, I noticed how the hands didn't move when the wheel turned. A little awkward. Yeah. Ja, wir haben alles gesehen, alles schnell besucht. Ich hoffe, euch hat es Spaß gemacht. Uns hat es auf jeden Fall super Spaß gemacht. Wir haben natürlich noch viel, viel, viel mehr was gehört von der E3 und werden euch sicherlich noch mal eine große Zusammenfassung in der nächsten Ausgabe bringen. Alle Spiele noch mal begutachten und sonst sieht man sich spätestens nächstes Jahr in LA wieder. Da strömen sie rein, die Massen. Wo diese ganzen Leute hinwollen, das ist der Eingang zur West Hall. Die West Hall ist die Halle, in der die beiden großen Sony und Nintendo waren. Und auch dort begeben wir uns jetzt hin. So, das ist der Sony-Stand. Nicht zu übersehen, das große PlayStation-Logo. Unter anderem gab es dort natürlich iToy zu sehen, das ihr auch an anderer Stelle auf unserer DVD seht. Eigentlich war es eine Fachmesse. Ja, ich yeah, still say the iToy actually has a nice design to it. How it mimics the PlayStation Ridges. But, what was it? Was it Neopets? Es gab immer noch was für die alte Kiste zu sehen. Yeah, Neopets Neo Darkest, Darkest Fairy. Oh, <laughs> I really want to play that game. So you have it now, so you really should. We should um, get to playing it sometime. 
Yeah, I've had it for a bit, but I haven't got around to playing it. I've heard it's very mediocre and very bad, but I mostly just want to play it for nostalgia regions reasons. Yeah, for nostalgia regions, all of them. Uh, yeah, all of the regions. Uh, yeah, because Megan, um, pure Megan or Neopets, right? Like even like even though I know you'd be very hesitant to say like even now, I think even now I could say you're still pretty into Neopets. Yeah, like not as much as I used to be. But I have been playing it casually kind of since the recent advent calendar stuff back in December. And I mean, I find it fun. I know a lot about it. I remember a lot of the Flash games. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, just Neopets. You like your Neopets. <laughs> I like Neopets. Ah, oh, there's Jack and Dark. Jack 2! Oh yeah, I guess Dark Jack was the big uh, selling point. That was the big selling point, yeah. It's like, whoa, he's evil well, now. And the guns. And the guns. It's like, damn, our whole game's changed. I still find that one of the weirdest things in gaming. They took a, a colorful... 3D platformer and turned it into a gritty, like, Grand Theft Auto type clone. It is really strange. But it actually worked, and that's the thing. Like, it was- that game is hard as balls. But, uh, it, it worked really well, surprisingly. That is true, that is really strange. Oh, my brother was really into this game. I saw a reflection of Final Fantasy X too. That's all I'll say for I now. did, yeah. Um, yeah, I've heard good things about Siphon Filter. Yeah, my brother was really into Siphon Filter. He played all three of the originals, and then he played a lot of Omega Strain. I think he was doing some stuff online on the PS3. But, yeah, he was, like, really into the Omega Strain. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, I really need to play those games sometime. I do, too, because I played a little bit of them when I was a kid, but I was very bad at video games, and I didn't really understand the whole concept of stealth, as you've seen with Metal Gear Solid when I first played it. Yeah. <laughs> So, I was pretty bad at it, but I would love to go back and kind of play them, because they're pretty fun games, from what I remember. We actually played a lot of the multiplayer, in particular, and there was this one map where, like, you can kind of climb into a building that's, like, in the center. So we'd kind of play this game where you'd have to get inside the building, and the other person would have to, like, come in and get you out. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. <laughs> but yeah, my brother was way better at that than me. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Yeah. I just want to like, I just want to see like some more of the Star Fox stuff real quick. Yeah. I don't really, um... Also, they got an advertisement shows. there for the Pokemon trading card game. They do. That's interesting. I know, I know the card game is definitely up by this point. Maybe they're just... I don't know, do they have like a They're probably just or? advertising a new set. I don't think Maybe. they had like an actual digital game yet. Yeah, yeah, they have Crystal in this one. Yeah. We didn't see her character model yet. We did not. Port Town. I find it interesting that they had SSX and 1080 here. Like, you just had like two independent like snowboard games. Yeah. Yo, Pikmin 2! Yeah. DVD loading Pikmin main thread. It is. Oh, so, uh, Pac-Man! I still think the idea of this game is cool, I just don't think it has a lot of longevity for most people. The idea is really cool, but yeah, it's just very... Oh, hi, it's Trico. Hey, it's Trico! <laughs> Surprise, Trico. <laughs> I guess that's a good point. This would have been the year that Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire came to the States, if I'm not mistaken. Or maybe they just came out. I don't quite remember. 
I believe you have to be correct, just because every you know, like Ubi and like the pinball and the Pokemon box thing, right? Yeah. I just don't know if those came out like after the games came out here. I want to say maybe it was the year after. Sega Mobile. Ah, uh, phones. Oh. Yeah. Und als letztes noch ein paar abgefüllte Eindrücke zu Headhunter Redemption für die PS2. <laughs> Very classy. Ah, um uh, this is the fashion show. Yeah. Yeah, I have to wonder, in the uh, other video, I wonder if we would have seen this guy film. Probably, based on the angle he's at, yeah. Yeah, because those maybe are the same not. Maybe he's did. standing behind him. Mm. Hmm. Well, the other I mean, guy we saw say. was on, like, the opposite side of the stage. Okay. Honestly, it could have been, like, like legitimately could be... Oh, my God. Space probably ain't working because they had another thing. It could be, like, any of these dudes, like, around here, to be honest. It could literally be any of them. Yeah, it's kind of funny. I like how a lot of them are using camcorders, and then there's the guy on the left that's using like his flip phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe at some point we'll have to go back with the to the other video and just see if there's a dude like filming at this angle, because we should be able to see him. Probably. Okay, I tell you, what, we're gonna. You know, what? actually, I'm, I'm way too curious. I'm I'm, I'm I'm way too curious. Okay, I'm just way too curious. <laughs> that was in was that in part two or part one? That was part two. I think that was part two. Yeah. yeah it was like right on here. I'm just really, really curious, okay? Because <laughs> what did I say, like, a couple of short floors ago? Like, wouldn't it be really cool if we saw, like, another perspective on the same scene? And, like, we saw the dude. Like, this is our one good opportunity here, Megan. This is our one yeah. opportunity. Right? I'm just going to mute this, though, because we need to hear it again. Because, like, it would have been... Because it was this exact same angle... Oh my god, how come my space bar isn't working? Like sometimes. Ooh. So it would have been one of the people down around here, I think. Probably, yeah. Because like this is the angle. Because I remember she does that, and yeah, he would. Maybe it's him. Because that, does that look like a camera? That might be him. Down yeah. There, that might be him. That, right that's there. about the right angle. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. We may have done it. We may have actually gotten different angles from the same thing where we can actually see both camera. Now he go. Now she goes down on the floor here, and this is when we see it. So he then the other guy would have been like somewhere around here. So unfortunately, it's like kind of blocked. A little bit from that angle. Oh man, uh, if we could get, like zoom in here, because it would be like some. It's one of these people here. I'm sure of it. I'm sure one of these people here is another. Like got another angle on it. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. It's like one of these people. It, it might even be that guy for all I know. There's a, there's a shape right there. Look, I'm just saying, this is the opportunity, all right? This is the opportunity. Okay, now we'll go back to uh, what we're actually doing. All right, we may have done it, though. We may have done it. <laughs> No, no, I, I, like, honestly, I, I just think it's, it's kind of crazy that may have happened. Also classy. Ninja Gaiden. Have you ever played a Ninja Gaiden game? Not really. 
I think we... I either played the demo of one of them on the PS3, or we rented one. I don't remember, but I I was very stuck in it. I think I got stuck, like, in the first level of the game. Mm. So, I never really went back to it. I mean, yeah, it's understandable. That, that's, that's what pretty much happened to me, I think. Because I want to say it was, like, their HD reboot on PS3, like, the first one that came out on PS3, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, that's cool. That was pretty cool. <laughs> Yo, Spongebob! Spongebob! I, I was gonna say WWE Smackdown Fist. Nice. Good job, Hulkster. Ein Spiel, auf das wir uns in der Redaktion besonders freuen, Broken Sword 3. Das ist ein neuer Teil einer Broken Sword Reihe von Adventures. Sie die beiden ersten Teile Baphomets Fluch. Mit dem dritten Teil schafft die Serie jetzt den Sprung in die dritte Dimension. Ist übrigens eines von den Spielen, die eigentlich schon lange überfällig sind, ein paar Mal verschoben wurden. Für den Gamecube wurde es mittlerweile ganz gecancelt. Für PlayStation 2 und Xbox kommt's aber immer noch. Wir sind sehr gespannt auf das Endergebnis, da uns die ersten beiden Teile sehr gut gefallen haben. Mehr über die Spiele von THQ in der nächsten Ausgabe. Damn! She gave the camera a kiss. <laughs> so Alias. That was a TV show, wasn't it? Alias? Man. Takes me back, dude. Außerdem zu sehen, NBA Jam kommt für alle Plattformen, ist die Rückkehr eines Klassikers und könnte unserer Meinung nach auch sehr, sehr gut werden. Weiteres Highlight, Gladiator, Sword of Vengeance, konnten wir uns vor einer Weile bei einem Trip nach Cheltenham in die Acclaim Studios schon mal näher angucken. Ich wollte sagen, ich wollte über License Games, hier geht's, hier geht's, hier geht's, hier geht's, hier geht's, hier Summer Heat Beach Volleyball, sehr inspiriert von Beach Spikers und Better Life Extreme Beach Volleyball. Wir haben eine Vorabversion in der Redaktion, konnten es also schon spielen, spielt sich sehr, sehr gut und erscheint exklusiv auf der Playstation 2. Das war's soweit, den Rest vom Acclaim Lineup zeigen wir euch in der nächsten Ausgabe. LucasArts hatten sich in einen ganz kleinen, kuscheligen Meetingraum eingemietet, den ihr hier mal im Überblick seht und zeigten einige ihrer... Oh, nice, the other public. So we actually see a bit of a demo for this then. At least a little bit of the demo. I was gonna say, it's interesting they start the demo on Tatooine, but I guess that would be the most recognizable planet for the Star Wars legacy. Probably. Was it Tatooine you go on in, um... Nice Old Republic or was it Dantooine? You go on both. Tatooine's oh, on both? a little bit later. Okay. Yeah, I always thought Dentum was confusing when I was a kid. I didn't understand it was a different place. I'm like, well, why is it both? <laughs> yeah. Very weird, right? Yeah. But yeah, I think uh, Tatooine is like... Like you said, number one, it's like the Star Wars planet that everybody's gonna know about. And yeah. number two, like... I think there is quite a few like interesting things on Tatooine that you could yeah. conceivably show someone in a demo. Yeah. And plus, by that point in the game, you can have, like, all sorts of powers and stuff unlocked, right? So... Yeah, no, it's definitely a good up. spot. Because it's far enough in the game that you can show more of the mechanics of the game. I mean, you can show stuff like the desert, the sand crawler, the speed racing, and, like, Tusken Raiders. Yeah. Depending on how big the demo is. And depending on what they want to show, they could also, in theory, give you the option of switching out to a couple different party members. Yeah. Because you would have most of them by that point. Yeah. Depending on the order you did the planets. Snick. No, we saw this whole, whole one already, right? We did, yeah. I said I might just like, do a little skippy doo doo. Because I assume he's going to show the full thing, which we don't really need to see. Next, we already saw this. We did. And it's pretty long. <laughs> it is very long. I still don't know if, I don't, I still don't remember if this bit's in the game or not. I don't quite remember. Like, the dude on yeah, the Yeah, I cannot see. Tell me the release date. I do like I this don't bit. Know. <laughs> that is pretty funny. For PlayStation yeah. 2. Not the bees. I always thought the bees were really funny. I will say that walking, like crush walking animation was like, it seemed a little jank in like 
Two times speed. I kind of want to see what it looks like at normal speed. Yeah, okay. There is a phantom that moves in twilight. Eh. Eh. Eh! I mean, it's not bad if you're trying to do a sneaky walk. It's not bad. It still looks a bit weird. But I'm not going to hate on it. Oh, because it's ghost. Okay. I, I especially can't... Man, see see what they did? How come how come my buttons don't work sometimes? See see like look like they even got like this far with it. Okay, so I actually want to see it one time speed. Yeah, okay. <laughs> because like it's it's ghost, right? Like I'm like I've never actually seen this like trailer for it before. Get the Protoss. There is a shadow that strikes without warning. Oh look at those what were those? Those were, um... They're Zerg. Are those the, um... Overlords? They might be the Overlords. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I don't know a ton about StarCraft. I did see something near the beginning of the trailer. It looked like it might be a Protoss thing. Yeah. I'm not sure, though. Yeah, that's why I said, ah, Protoss. I don't know if you heard that. No, I did not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My bad. But see, this is, and see, like this, like this is a, um... A Terran. Yeah, that's a Terran, but more specifically, it's, uh... I don't, I don't know if they have, like, a specific name. It may just be, like, Fire Terran or Flame Terran, I think. Okay. Yeah, and there's... See, it's, see, this is why I, I'm really especially sad that Ghost never happened. It would have been so cool to see all these things, like some of these units that you you recognize, like on a different scale, right? Yeah. Like you have the. Wait for it. Wait for it. I took it back a little too far. Like you have the the turret here, the sentry turret, for um, yeah. Like the Protoss, right? Like that's cool to see at this angle. And you have the pylon. Look look, look how big the pylon is, right? Yeah, it's pretty big. Like on the top there. Like, it's really cool seeing it from this angle and perspective. You have, like, Hydralisks and, yeah, Hydralisk, right? Yeah. More, like, Terran dudes or Flame dudes. Uh, I don't remember what the mech's name was. If it had one in the game, I don't quite remember. Yeah, the Overlord. Yeah, call and doing what ghosts do in StarCraft, calling down a new, right? Yeah. Like that's just cool as hell. I'm so sad that it never saw the light of day. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Yeah. Okay, this we've already seen like numerous times. I've already talked about it a bunch. Does it drive you or drive you crazy? <laughs> Monster Hunter, Monster the classic Hunter. Monster oh. Hunter. Now they're not going to show that, I guess, but, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> a game that would go on to form quite the series. Yeah, I still need to play a lot of them. I've only ever played a little bit of Rise. I play a tiny bit of World. A very tiny bit of World. Yeah, I've seen a lot Mario of Mario Golf already. <laughs> Let's skip through this a bit. We've we seen a lot of F-Zero as well. Yeah, we have. No. Fable. We've actually seen a lot of Crystal Chronicles, too. Oh, no, this is Crystal Chronicles. You're right. We did this last so time. I think we'd even just, like, skip through this, because that's another one that we've just seen a bunch of. Right? Have yeah. we seen this trailer? Yeah, I think we've seen all of it. I'm pretty sure. This one might be new. Ah, oh, this is, um, Kinoichi. Right? No, no, because that was Shinobi. Are you sure? Is this Ninja Gaiden? This might be Ninja Gaiden. Just because I know that's, like, Ryu or whatever. 
Yeah. I just saw the woman. I'm like, oh, it's Kanoji. But then I'm like, oh, wait, no, it's Shinobi. This is Ninja yeah. Gaiden. Unless... Man, I'm pretty sure it's Ninja Gaiden. I think it is. Very Harley Quinn like. Harley Quinn esque. Kind of, yeah. It's a pretty good trailer, to be fair. She has like a knife to her leg or something. She's weird. She's weird looking. And she's got spaghetti hair too. And a butt. Yeah. Ninja Gaiden. This one is Fable. And another game that I do love, I do love Fable. Another game that I'm trying to get Megan to play, actually. Yeah. I did enjoy what we played with it. We just kind of got distracted and I ended up, like, stopping a few hours in the game. Yeah. I will get back to it, though. <laughs> Okay, the other one that we saw. So this one might just be the yeah. whole thing again? So. Probably, yeah. Because this was already seen. I've already really said all I can and need to say about Halo 2. Yeah. Great game, just they really made people really pissed off with this. Beyond Good and Evil. Hallo liebe Game Leser. Diese idyllischen Szenen entstammen dem Info von Beyond Good and Evil. Ihr seht hier die PlayStation 2 Version. Das Spiel wird gemacht von Marcel Ansel, das ist der Chef von Raymond. Und I really need to play this game sometime. Ich benutze hier nur die Nudix Taste, die Schlagkombos geht von ganz alleine aus. Yeah. Der Kampf wird später noch finessenreicher, aber das hier ist ja noch das Info. Ein paar Minuten später hat uns dann ein übermächtiges Monster doch erwischt und betäubt. Like it's one of those games that I've always heard praised, but I've never really had much interest in playing it to be honest. So, Wir haben jetzt eine halbe like, I don't know why, because like it's not like I think it'd be bad. It's just like I don't know. I just don't. I'm just like, eh, you know. I could play it, and then I just I mean, don't. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> I I should sometime though. One of these days, I should actually play it. I should too. I played very little of Beyond Good and Evil. I didn't get too far into it. Maybe one day we'll get Beyond Good and Evil too. Ich erwähnte das bereits, Jade ist Fotoreporterin und nimmt sich deswegen auch im härtesten Kampf noch die Zeit, schnell ein Foto zu machen und das an das Wissenschaftsmuseum zu verkaufen. Transaktion gelungen, weiter geht's. Page, das Schwein, hilft uns beim Kämpfen ein bisschen mit. Ihr könnt seine besondere Attacke von ihm auslösen. Ja, yeah, kind of interesting, actually. Like, Beyond Good and Evil is kind of another game that I never actually saw any gameplay of. Until probably now, uh, actually. Der Titel verspricht, ein großartiges Spiel zu werden. Yeah. Lest ihr im Heft. Viel Spaß noch mit dem Rest der DVD. Oh boy. That thing doesn't look too friendly. No. And I guess that is the end of that. Ended very abruptly, it is. actually. Um, so, like we said, uh, I'm going to kind of package this with the final thing just because it's like 16 minutes and I don't really see much need to have it be separate. Um, yeah. Especially since we're done with the show floors now. So this is from Fun Funland? Funland? Funland. Funland. Um... So, once again, feel free to check out the fellow's channel. Link in description, as always. Uh, but let's see what GameSpot thought was going to be some of the some of the top games of this year. Half Life Two. Mm, okay. That's true. I'm surprised we didn't see that, but I guess they didn't really show us the PC oh, well, floor. I'm
Yeah, PC is something that doesn't really like get you on E3 at this point. We'll start off with the top five GameCube games. Oh, uh, you gotta. Display. Yeah, I always love it when they do this, where they're like, yeah, "I'm gonna look at the camera." Oh, now I'm gonna turn and look at this camera here. Start like, it's such a, it's it's so silly, but like, it looks cool at the time, right? Like at the time, it's like, damn, that's pretty cool. Now it actually looks yeah. really lame, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Especially with like how little, how like literally kind of puts into it. You, like, like just how much, like, like. Just, just watch. You don't know what I mean, right? Like he doesn't put as much into it as like he probably could. Guide to GameSpot's look at the best games of E3 2003. We'll start off with the top. It's just like a very like slow turn, right? Just like very basic. Nintendo's latest iteration. Yeah. Pac-Man. Profoundly unique about. I mean, it's very unique, but this is really interesting. Multiplayer action in tandem with GameCube to Game Boy Advance. I can see why they thought it might be a pretty decent GameCube game because I mean it does have a very unique multiplayer element to it. It is based off a popular IP so like it makes sense yeah Rogue Squadron, 3. Well, Rogue Squadron makes sense too it makes sense but see it's kind of funny because like I know this one wasn't like like it, like I don't think it was as popular as it could have been which is really interesting you know yeah this time you play as Luke after he the snow I just think the the on foot stuff may have taken away from the game funnily enough probably yeah People are like, I just want to fly Coming the ships. This one is a fair one, Double though. The most I'm surprised it's not higher up. Is the use of two at once. Halo is probably going to get well, top one or two. Honestly. Well, this is GameCube game specifically. Oh, this is Game GameCube game specifically. Okay, I didn't see that. Might be. Yeah. Can hold one power up. So if you switch between the two of them during a race, you can actually hold two power ups at the same time. Mario Kart fans have a lot to look forward to. And number two is Capcom's Fair. Fair. So number two. I mean, I guess it was pretty unique. It was. So, because, yeah, Beautiful Joe was reviewed really well, but wasn't it also kind of like, like, what was the deal with it? I know people liked it. But, like, they didn't really get a lot of love from Capcom after, though, did it? I mean, it got a sequel a bit later, but... It did get a sequel, but I don't think it sold, like, super well. And I think it eventually got ported to, like, PS2. But, yeah. Now, this is an interesting one, because I know for a fact this one probably shouldn't have been... I mean, this one probably shouldn't have been number one. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised. Every track in the game does an equally spectacular job of keeping you tensely glued to the action on the screen. With loads of sharp curves, gravity-defying twists and loops, and spectacular jumps. However, the gameplay in F-Zero GX isn't limited to driving as fast as you can until you get to the end. A fair amount of strategy will be required if you want to advance. Well, that's our look at the best GameCube games shown at E3 2003. But before we move on, let's take a quick look at the top five Game Boy Advance titles that were shown as well. Okay, Game Boy Advance. Is Pokemon Pinball going to be on here? Oh, that'd be nice. It was only shown as a looping demo I hope Advance Wars on here. Metroid Zero Mission definitely looks like one of the more promising Game Boy Advance games currently in development. Judging from the demo, Metroid Zero Mission appears to be a remake of the original Metroid for the NES, but with new features from other Metroid games and enhanced graphics. And number Buktai. four, Bokutai. Is Bokutai a Hideo Kojima game? That's this interesting. Action role game puts yeah, I didn't know that. Fire Hunter armed with a solar powered gun. While the game's premise is pretty standard, maybe there's a reason he doesn't associate his name with it anymore. I mean, maybe. Like, I did see it had a couple games in the series. I think last one was released in like 2007, though. Yeah. So, oh, there's Advance Wars. Nice. Like its highly praised predecessor, Advance Wars 2 is a turn based strategy game featuring a variety of different, well balanced units and a number of commanding officers whom you can play as or against. The CEOs have various strengths, weaknesses, and special abilities that they impart in all their forces, giving the game a great Yeah, why didn't they put Billy Hatcher on, like, the GameCube game, game ones? I don't know. Titles, Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem is another fair one to put on the GBA. It is, although I don't think the Game Boy Advance version of the game really sold that well. That's why they didn't port more of them. Or maybe, no, this was the first one they ported here, actually, now I think about it. Wars, yeah, no, I, I'm getting confused because yeah, there's there's more that came out before this in Japan. This is the first one that got localized. The number one spot for the Game Boy Advance. Mario, Mario Luigi. Luigi. No it's subtitle game, for this from one what yet. I heard. Same. Yeah. Okay, so so far, apart like I mean, the GBA ones they they got pretty well, I think. Yeah. 
Mario and Luigi gain experience points, level up, earn new special abilities, get into turn-based battles with various monsters, and must save Princess Peach from a fate worse than death. It seems her voice has been stolen and replaced with explosives. Oh. <laughs> Those are the top five Game Boy Advance games seen at E3. Let's move on to check out the most promising Xbox game. At number five, Microsoft and... Well, this is a oh, sad one. No. This one had a lot of promise. So good. But unfortunately, not You'll create a virtual in North America. From one of five different races. Yeah. You'll upgrade your own house. Actually, no, wait, this one is just straight up canceled. Never mind. Yeah, this one got canceled. True Fantasy Live Online is an ambitious game that should raise the bar for what we expect man, from online console. Man, honestly, I think if this one would have came out, man, I'm so sad. That one would have been really good. Yeah, I think it would have been a pretty unique game. An overzealous Los Angeles police detective tossed off the squad only to be brought back on as part of a new above the law task force, the Elite Operations Division. Developers Luxaflux have built a 240 square mile replica Luxaflux. of Los consisting of both indoor and outdoor environments in which you can drive cars around the city, fire loads of different weapons, and engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat. As I do like the name Luxaflux, that sounds pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Number three, Fable. Fair. Fair. Fable definitely does deserve to be on this list. Development depends heavily on your action. Yeah, I'd agree. If you want to become a hero, then you must perform heroic feats before large groups of people so your reputation will grow. A path of villainy can be followed through dastardly deeds such as robbery. The game's combat revolves around context-sensitive attacks and a variety of magic called will. These gameplay mechanics, along with some incredibly detailed visuals, made Fable one of the most impressive games at E3 2003. Number two, Ninja Gaiden. Ninja I mean, Gaiden probably fair. Purposes, a straight up action I'm, I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not Ninja too big into Ninja Gaiden. So for me, it'd be like Fable should be above it, in my opinion, but I'm also kind of biased. I can see why they think Ninja Gaiden would be a pretty popular also, game, though. Incredible agility to navigate various obstacles. All the game's environments and enemies, and even Ryu himself, look great. We were highly impressed with Ninja Gaiden's demo, and we look forward to seeing more of the game. Finally, in the top spot, yeah, of course. Xbox, Halo 2. Halo 2 appeared in the form of an eight-minute demo that Microsoft and Bungie employed and played non-stop for crowds at Microsoft's booth. The demo depicted some heavy futuristic urban warfare. The Covenant forces are in the process of overrunning a section of East Africa called New Mombasa. You, once again as Master Chief... So none of this is actually, Earth like, in the game. Yeah. The game can keep up I think you're in, on Earth for, like, one level. <laughs> to be fair, that might, I think it might actually still be in New Mombasa, but still. Fans of the PlayStation 2 have a lot to look forward to this year thanks yeah. to the strong 2003 lineup. Which, as you're about to see, was led by five fantastic new titles at this year's E3. Starting out at number five is Zipper Interactive. So come to? Okay, that makes a lot of sense. It does. SOCOM 2 U.S. Navy SEALs is the follow-up to last year's best online game for the PlayStation 2. The game will feature many of the same single-player multiplayer mechanics as the original game, but in classic sequel fashion, SOCOM 2 will have more weapons, more missions, and more modes to choose from. The meat of the game is still at 16 player. I like that one guy's name. Woo woo! Rest assured, both Zipper and Sony are serious about correcting the widespread use of in game cheats. Ringing in at number four is Gratty's Five. Interesting. As you can see, the production values hmm. of the game alone are staggering. From crisp, well animated graphics to the driving soundtrack and It's really interesting. Yeah, they have Empire. put like it's one of the more retro looking games on here. Yeah, it looks good though. It does, it does. I like the way they did the animation of the ships going up and down, too. Yeah, it's nice. Once again, True Crime Streets of LA again. This one got really? PS2 and Xbox. I feel like that's cheating. Both lists? That is cheating, 100%. There was way more good games. You could have put something else. GameSpot. <laughs> they probably thought it was going to be like the next GTA or something. Probably. Which, to be fair, it is good. So far, everything we've seen well, yeah, nothing against like, the game itself, but, like, yeah. you know, I hate it when people do that. Yeah. Yeah, no, it like shouldn't be on ago. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's like years ago, and I'm looking online for, like, you know, top 10 Vita games and stuff, and, like, all of them but one reports. It's just oh. like, okay, you know, it's not really a Vita game if we're just playing Hotline Miami for however many times. Like, <laughs> I mean, true, yeah. <laughs> so I keep the list original. Yeah. But that may be kind of telling for, like, the PSP titles, right? Or Vita titles? Which one did you say? Yeah, it was the Vita. Yeah, Metal Gear Solid 3. Yeah, this one is a uh, fair one put on the list. Yeah. Although, I will notice. Notice how they didn't put on Twin Snakes. Right? The yeah. GameCube one. I mean, there was a lot of good stuff on the GameCube, so maybe they had doubts about it as well. Plus, they probably wanted to put Metal Gear on the PS2 list. I don't know. <laughs> they got double standards, apparently. Apparently. Now that we've taken a look at the top console games of E3, let's turn our attention to the 10 best PC games that are on display. Ten, Ooh, ten best, best Ooh, PC games. By the editors of GameSpot. At number 10, Far Cry. Far Cry. Oh, yeah, first oh, Far Cry. Far Cry? Mm. Oh. There we go, yeah. Now, this one deserves to be on the list for sure. See, I've never played the first one. I did play a little bit of Far Cry 2. And a little bit of Far Cry 3. I have very little experience with the Far Cry franchise. So I played in the Far Cry's where you like turn into an alien and like kill people. <laughs> Far Cry had some pretty weird thing? spin offs. Yeah, yeah. No, Far Cry had some pretty weird like and little spin offs, nine, honestly. Uh, I don't remember what it's called, three. but maybe I'll see if I can find it sometime. I'm going to be curious, because like, the only spinoff I know about is Blood Dragon, but that's like a, a cyberspace type thing from what I know. I think it's Far Cry Instinct? Is what it's called? Mm, I think. Okay. Okay. Uh, at number eight. Ah, Evil Genius, yeah. So, so far, they're hitting him out of the mm. park with uh, the list for PC. Although, I want to say Evil Genius might be more of, like, a cult hit. Yeah. I think so. I did see, like, newsletters and stuff about, I think it was Evil Geniuses 2 a few years ago, or a remake? Oh, wow, but, look at this. Yeah. Sorry, go up here. I'll pause it here. So I can talk about Call of Duty and you can finish your thought. Well, that's okay. I just, I remember hearing about Evil Geniuses, but I never played the game at all. I mean, fair. Me too. I've not played it, but I would like to. Uh, so the original Call of Duty obviously would go on to build, blow up and be a massive franchise. Uh, definitely deserves to be on this list. I actually recently played uh, Call of Duty 1. Uh, for Megan, actually. And... Holds up! Holds up! Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh. Man, that's still alive, too. Isn't that crazy? I was gonna say, is this different than Lord of the Rings Online? Oh, wait. Maybe it is. Maybe I might be thinking of Middle Earth uh, Online. Or Lord of the Rings I want to say Lord of the Rings Online is more of, like, a top-down, like, MMO versus, like, a... 3D action one. Let me see. Middle Earth Online. Um, I mean, so let's see here. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is it. It's the same one. I guess wow, they eventually okay. changed the name. That's interesting. I didn't know that. But yeah, that's crazy. It's still going. Okay, so it looked like uh, Vivendi announced a, an agreement with Turbine in 2003 to produce Middle Earth Online. At that time, expected to be released in 2004. In March 2005, Turbine announced that it had bought the rights to make an MMORPG based on Tolkien's literature, and that Turbine would publish Lord of the Rings Online instead of Vivendi. So, mm. it's the same game. I guess it's just, uh, it went through a couple different hands. That's crazy, though, isn't it? Like, 2003 is when we first yeah. got into this. And the game is still going, and going pretty strong, from what I understand. Like, it's not at one of the top MMOs of all time. Not even close yeah, to it's... touching, like, WoW or FF14, but... Go no, ahead. it's definitely got its dedicated fan base, and mm. it does have a decent player base from what I understand. I've heard good things about it. I, I just remember when I tried it before, I didn't really get too into it. 
to the memorable locations in Tolkien's original Lord of the Rings saga. Native Middle-earth online's environments will also be densely populated with neutral characters such as hobbits, creating a fully immersive Lord of the Rings experience. Yes, hobbits. Number five, God, oh, Rome, Total, Total War. War. Total One of my favorites. One of my favorites of like all time. Love Rome, Total War. Rome, yeah, it's a pretty interesting game. You've shown me a little bit of gameplay. We do need to get back to doing more of that sometime, though. I, I would like to show you some more of it, yeah. It's it's really good. Music, the way everything looks, the way the units control, just the general gameplay and, like, campaign. It's so good and so unique. It's so, so good. I've not heard of Commandos 3. Or have I? I don't know. I don't think I have. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Breaking the story up into three distinct campaigns and adding more direct combat and more powerful weapons. The new game benefits from an engine with more 3D features such as real-time lighting, 3D interiors, and the power to put lots of enemies on a single map. Falling in at number three is Call of Duty Dark Corners of the Earth. Ooh. Call of Cthulhu, huh? Definitely more of a cult game nowadays. It's a good game. It, <laughs> so, so it's a good game. So here, here, here's the thing with Call of Cthulhu, Dark Corners of the Earth. It's a good game, right? But it's very different than like a lot of other PC games. Uh, like a lot of other games in, in, in general with what you'd expect, really. Very much slower pace from what I recall. Um, not bad, although I will admit, and I don't know if this would have been for the original or not. I know when I played it, it had a problem with crashing, right? Okay. Uh, which meant you saved a lot. But... If you save too many times, your ending is actually not satisfying at all. Uh, mm. So the problem is with the game that crashes so often. Yeah. Needing to save is very crucial. So when your ending is um, dictated by how many times you save, then oh, that's yeah. kind of poor, right? It's, it's a bit unfortunate. Cause like it's cool not, idea, but bad in execution. Yeah, because like it's not like it's a bad ending either. Like, like how do I put it? Like the end. Like it's not like like when I say it's a, like it's bad, I don't mean like oh you get the bad ending. You just get an incomplete ending. I, I, from what I yeah. remember, it's more like oh there's a light. Oh you go into it. Oh credits roll. Right. Uh, but if you get the actual full ending, like m there's more to it from what I remember, and it makes a lot more sense. So I remember when I first beat. Call of Cthulhu, I was like, that's really weird and really confusing. And then I found out about the ending thing, and then I looked it up later online, and I was like, damn, yeah, I like that a lot more. <laughs> you know? A really good game. Should try to get you to play it sometime. Yeah, okay. But we'll mod it, so uh, it gets rid of the safe thing. So you just, like, get the ending that you should get. Let alone a game that promises to be as scary as Call of Cthulhu. Really solid, though. At number two... Halo Combat Evolved. Oh yeah, because it's got a PC port. PC That's right. Of the Xbox yeah, it came Halo. out on PC later. I kind of forgot about that. Extra edge if it weren't for the fact that the game is being rebalanced for this month. PC shooters <laughs> You killed Sketch. Support, and there's some cool additions to Halo's multiplayer that have us itching to take Yeah, because you can fly the Banshee, I think. And uh, the PC port. And finally, the number one PC game, which just so happens to be our number one pick for best game overall shown at E3 2003. Valve's Half-Life 2. Yeah. Really does I mean, they're pretty spot on, on with list. that. Yeah. More One more of the games <laughs> defining the, game the generation. Define the generation and honestly, like, like for sure define the company. I think, like, because of Half-Life 2, it really skyrocketed, like, Valve into being the absolute monster it is today. Well, it skyrocketed Valve, but they also released Steam on the same time they released Half-Life 2, didn't they? Yeah, I believe so, or at least very close to. So that that also helped a lot with them, I imagine. I don't. I think their outfits a bit different. Yeah, her outfit is different. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, no, that, yeah, no. Okay, Gamespot. Okay, you know what, Gamespot? Yeah, you were right. Even like. 20 years on later, you know what? You were right about Half-Life 2.
<laughs> the only shame is no Half Life Three, and that really, really hurts me. I'm curious, yeah, like when we get to like later E3s, if we're gonna, gonna to see Half Life Episode One and Two. Oh, for sure, and that's gonna make me feel. Oh. Yeah. Half Life Two demo featured pre-recorded gameplay, but it wasn't hard to imagine what it'll be like to play through the action scenes. Yeah, they changed her well, outfit a fair bit. Yeah. That it's on schedule for release on September 30. Well, that's our look at the most impressive games displayed at E3 2003. If you want to see more video of any of the games shown, please be sure to check the games category, which is sorted alphabetically by game title. Until next time, for GameSpot, I'm Rich Gallup. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Rich Gallup. <laughs> Let's see, did Rich Gallup go on to do anything? Kinda curious. Rich Gallup. Oh, he has a Twitter account now. No, is this the same guy? Wait, hold on. <laughs> well, it says, like, Director of Production at Jackbox Games. Oh, so I don't well, know that's if... kinda cool if that's the same guy. I mean, it might be. He looks a lot older in this picture, but, like... Uh, let me let me compare let me compare Rich Gallup. Yeah, you know what? I think that is him actually. He even still kind of has a similar haircut. Okay, that's funny. No, I mean if he went on to make Jackbox games, then you know what? He's doing really well for himself. Yeah, that's kind of funny. Alright, cool. All right, so. Megan, what do you think of E3 2003? I noticed the big theme of online, especially. Yeah, they were definitely pushing online in games. Definitely was a new thing. And I mean, like you said, with some of the marketing, they are trying to push the processing power of the PS2, Xbox, and GameCube to show more things on screen. But there's a lot of like surprisingly really good hits that came out this year. I'm kind of surprised mm -hmm. how many there are. Yeah, me too. 2003 was a really good year for video games. Yeah. Uh, Like, really, really solid. At least the ones shown are E3. It is a really good E3 for showing off really good video games. I'm sure some of them came out in 2004, but... Yeah. You know. Yeah, really good year. I'm actually really surprised. And even some that we didn't see until the last show floor, which is like Spider-Man 2 and Half-Life 2 and... Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, no, really, really good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 2003. Very solid. May even be one of my favorite years that we've watched, honestly. I don't know if it's the favorite. I'm going to need to think about that. But it's it's probably pretty high up there with just all the good games I've seen. Yeah, probably. I think it's definitely one of the better E3 years that we've looked at. I don't think we've seen one quite this good since, like, 98. Yeah, I could probably... I could believe that. Okay. Well, should that be it for the year 2003, Megan? Yeah. And move on to the year 2004? To yeah, that's going to be nice. Yet. It's going to be nice. You know, it's kind of funny. I actually did see a thumbnail for, like, the conference for Nintendo for E3 2004. And I'm like, I remember that. I remember seeing that. <laughs> So I know for a fact I would have at least seen 2004. I'm pretty damn sure I started in 2003, but I know I started in... Two th I know I was there for 2004 at the very least. Yeah. Because I saw a thing on the thumbnail. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, I, I remember when that happened. I'm pretty sure. All right. Anyway. Megan and I will go and do that. But for now... Now, what everybody else think of 2003 for E3? Did you know, I'm sure a lot of people's favorite games were at E3 2003. I would not be surprised. Yeah, I, I would be very curious to see, too. All right. But for now, I guess that's it. So thank you very much, everybody, for watching. We hope you all enjoyed. But for now, it's time to cue the outro. So for I go, and we shall catch you guys later. Bye-bye.